today um, you know we we have something really special uh, we have a very uh, special speaker in the house tonight you know and that's none other than anu come on you can do it better we have seen anu on the stage we have seen uh, uh, anu leading the worship and uh, uh, oh boy that's amazing I, i specifically have to say about anu this i've seen that transition of uh, she being a very shy little girl on the corner of the stage at the very initial time when she was backing it up and then towards leading and not just leading but you know you you got to be there you have to you got to be there on one of the sunday when anu leads it you know that that it it shows the way uh, you know god has worked over a period of time you know it, it's like a transition how god had moved her from one place to another place you know so we are so so blessed to have you anu uh, in the house tonight uh, so can we all put together a big round of applause and welcome anu This is her first time sharing. You know, I met her uh, in the evening and she came running. Uh, I thought she'll say oh, I'm worried. I'm 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 a little scared. But she said, "I'm you know what? I'm so excited. I don't have any anxiety. I- I'm so so up for this." So 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 although it's her first time, let's 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 try and motivate her as 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 we go into the word. Right? All you guys are know. God bless you. Good evening church. Good evening church. Good evening. That's the spirit. I want a lot of, you know, encouragement from your end. Not because I'm not encouraged, not because I'm not excited, but I want you guys to be excited as well. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 All right, so I welcome everyone. So I believe that every one of you over here are not here by coincidence trust me you're not here because you had to be in a church it's because god wanted you to be here and he has a word for you he has a word for you he just released it right now and i i believe that you 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 will receive it when you are sensitive to the spirit and god gave me a strong word during the worship that he setting the captives free amen, amen. come on church amen. he's setting the captives free tonight and that's why you are here yeah so i i want to encourage somebody in this place who who is tired who's weak <coughs> you know God is good church. God is good. You you might think that there are things that uh, that are very, you know, you you may not be able to do it or you might feel that you're not capable of doing a lot of things. But I'll tell you, I am a live testimony standing in front of you. And this is the one thing that I thought that I would never do it. I thought no God, fine. Worship, yes. you take me to some place to pray yes i'll do but preaching or sharing the word talking about god is was something which was difficult for me it was very hard for me and the enemy had you know put a seed in my mind in my heart that i was not capable of doing it take this word every strength of yours are told or made you guys to believe that it is weakness but it is not your weakness it is your strength if you say if 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 you feel that you're struggling in a subject if you feel that chemistry is hard if you feel mathematics is hard trust me those are the subjects that you will score top to the highest because that is your strength and the enemy is a liar he speaks a lot of lies I'll start with the testimony my my personal uh, you know experience and so I was brought up in a very orthodox family and I 
always had this, you know, in my mind that God, what next? So after my second PUC, that is 12th standard, what next? So I had a desire of getting into medical. So I wanted to become a doctor. And then God told me, no, that is not yours. So I opted to be an engineer. And I told God, I'll go to any place in the world, but never Bangalore. Never Bangalore. I just told this. I told, you give me any place, give me the next city, give me a village. I'm fine, but not Bangalore. Because the enemy was a liar. He told that he knows, he knows my calling. He knew that I will be placed in BRC. He knew that I will be serving God. He knew Bangalore was my destiny, but he told a lie. And that was so strong in my mind that I couldn't come out of it. But yes, God is God. He put me in Bangalore and I, you know, I started with my studies and everything went well. And now Bangalore is a city that I love. And if you ask me, God, if you're going to be putting me somewhere else, I would be the first person to say, no, please. <laughs> That's how God has worked in me. I want every one of us to read this. This was the word that God gave me when I was praying yesterday night. Isaiah chapter 35 verse 4. I don't want you to read by looking into, you know, yes, definitely you will have to look into the screen, but look into your neighbor's eye and, and declare this over them. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. Amen? Come on, church. Amen? Amen? Yes. Now look into your other neighbor and declare this over them. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. He is coming. He's not coming, he's already here. Amen. Be strong, church. Be strong. Be encouraged. All right. I want to read another uh, you know, verse. Psalms 145 and 19. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries for help and rescues them. He grants the desires of your heart. You know what desire I had was to preach. I had a small desire in my heart to preach someday like someone. You know, I don't know, I just love it. But then I had equal and opposite fear that stopped me from preaching. And the enemy would say, no, you're not capable of speaking. You have, you have, uh, you have, you know, you have a very bad communication. You have, you, you can't, you can't even make a sentence. You can't form a sentence and, you know, deliver a message to the people. And how would you, how would you do it? But, you know, a God is greater. He is the creator of my language. He is the creator of my language and he knows what to do when I'm on the pulpit because it's him who's talking and not me. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cries for help and rescues them. Okay, I want to show some picture and I want you guys to guess what this is. I want you guys to interact with me, church. Fear? Scared? Tensed? Worried? Stressed? Yes, almost. So, it is something unpleasant, right? Unpleasant emotion, unpleasant feeling makes you feel uncomfortable. Do you think that our God created us to have these kind of expressions or, you know, feelings? Do you, do you think that? No, definitely not. 
He loves us. He loves us so much that he gave his only son. I was asking God, God, what am I going to preach or what am I going to teach or what are you going to, you know, speak through me? And he just gave this word, fear. And then I had an experience where I, I work in a corporate company, so I, I have different shifts. So it is rotational. So I get to meet a lot of people and I feel that is good in terms of sharing the gospel and, you know, uh, getting to know so many in the world. And they are our brothers and sisters. It's our responsibility, right? So that's when I met this girl uh, who, who, who used to just, you know, have a travel with me in the cab. And she, someday, she, 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 she was a very good girl. She was very funny and very jovial and all that. But someday, I saw a sadness in her face. There was something troubling her heart. So I just approached her and asked, is something troubling you? And if you don't mind, please share it with me. I would love to pray for you. And then she was like, yes. And she, she started you know, sharing her heart with me, saying that her cousin wasn't well. He was a young guy who had two babies, but then right now he's in the hospital and he was at a serious condition. And she was so troubled by this. She was talking for the entire day about this guy who was in hospital and how would his family uh, you know, be strengthened and all that stuff. So I was just asking God, God, what do you want me to tell her? What do you want me to speak to her so that she will feel better? And I heard nothing in the morning. So I just encouraged her saying that, don't worry, God will take care of you. God will take care of his family and God will heal him. And these were the three words that I just gave to her. And yes, so I got into my work. And after that, the night when we traveled back to home, I was, a cab was late. So I was just waiting and I was waiting, uh, talking to her. I again got some time to talk with her and I was just saying, talking and knowing about her heart, how was she feeling, if she was better. And then God just released this word in my spirit. He told, he asked me to tell her to face her fears. And this is the title of today's sermon, Face Your Fears. Come on church, can you repeat with me? Face the fear, face the fear. And when I asked God, what was fear? He just gave me this abbreviation. Fight the enemy who acts to be real. Fight the enemy who acts to be real. He is just appearing to be real, but he's not real. Come on, church. God has given us the strength to fight the enemy who's just pretending, who's just acting, who's appearing to be real, but it is not. And the best way to fight our fears is the scripture alone. If you haven't known God, if you haven't known what, what God has for you, it's time for you to take up your Bibles and start reading from today. The only book, the book of life, which can change you completely is the word of God. The scripture is the only solution for your fears, church. She was worried because she didn't know who God was. She didn't know what, what we carry. She didn't know that there was a God who was with, with us all the time. Even when we were, we were sleeping, talking, enjoying, crying, there was somebody who was with us and that was our God. And when you don't have God, you will definitely be ruled by fear. And it is also very important to know who your enemy is. It's very important to know who your enemy is, church. So your enemy could be, you know, if you are a student, your enemy is your studies. Right? <laughs> Come on. 
on you wouldn't like to study you wouldn't like to take your book you wouldn't like to read it's important and also it is very important to understand that there are two types of fear and one is the spirit of fear that the enemy gives you that brings in your life and the other one is the fear of god so th- there's a huge difference between the spirit of fear and the fear of god the spirit of fear has a negative ending basically it doesn't have a positive ending for example my fear was to stand before the congregation and speak and that was the fear that was given by the enemy and that didn't have a product it it had no result it was negativity but when i stepped up when i said god no i will take up a f- you know a step of faith and i will stand on this pulpit for you it it has some productivity there's a product there is there's something about this and this is positive end and the enemy and 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 the enemy would always try to tell you that you are hopeless you know everything that you that you take or everything that you speak would would be hopeless he he limits your victory these are the fears that is given by the enemy so so let's see what the fear of god is let's let's see how how do you how how do you you know learn or how do you get to know the fear of god and and the 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 fear of god is produced by the word of god alone church it is produced by the word of god alone and that is your scripture and that is the bible every word and every single word written in the bible has life taste and see the lord taste and see it and you will never leave it so i have few points for fear of god it is an attitude of respect it's an attitude of respect and it always has a positive quality it bears a positive end which is always beneficial when you fear the lord it always gives you benefit and then acknowledges god's good intentions this is the four things that i could make out of explaining what a fear of god is Let, let's go to the scripture ephesians chapter 5 18 to 20 can we read together don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life instead be filled with the holy spirit singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourself and making music to the lord in your hearts and give thanks to everything to god the father in the name of the lord jesus christ when you have the fear of god in your heart you will be filled with the holy spirit you will be singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourself and making music to the lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to god the father in the name of jesus you know if you if you have the fear of god in your heart you will not be sitting in a place you will be leaping with joy you will be filled with the holy spirit you will be making music in your heart you you will be giving thanks to god and these are something positive products right it is it has some productivity the god's fear has productivity and i also want to read uh, deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 6 Okay before before getting into the scripture I want to share one of my experiences So I work in the corporate sector and when I was a new believer I I really didn't want to work or do something that 
you know that i wouldn't say that it is not god's will but i wasn't satisfied by that so every time i go to office and come back i will be so depressed and i will be like god why did you place me here because i wouldn't like to mingle with people over there i wouldn't like to talk to them the things that they talk i i wanted to be someone who would always be in the presence of god and would always you know mingle with uh, the godly people and to know god to learn him to love him but then some day when i was asking god god why have you placed me in this place and why why do you want me to work here when i feel nothing good about it and then god just spoke this to me he told if everyone in the world wants to have the best and everyone opts something good and who will share the gospel to those who are here who will show who will show you know that you carry god and you being an ident you know a, a person who is who's carrying god in your heart or basically your identity in christ is revealed when you are in, when you are placed in a place where you where you see things that are not godly so i just came back home and i was not i was not convinced by the answer i just came back home and i sat in my place i opened the scriptures and i read this so be strong and courageous do not be afraid and do not panic before them for the lord your god will personally go ahead of you he will neither fail you nor abandon you i read the scripture and i felt good but then i just had this thought in my mind okay let me put my name before the word so so can we put our names before the word so and read it anu so be strong and courageous do not be afraid and do not panic before them for the lord your god will personally go ahead of you he will neither fail you nor abandon you amen and this had a spark in my spirit i was like god you are with me it's not me who is holding god's hand it is god who's holding my hand even when i feel like leaving him he's not ready to leave me he's like i will be in your ups i will be in your downs i will come with you personally and i will he will stand for you church he will defeat the enemies he will go where you go he will neither fail you nor forsake you that is our god and since then i had got the strong uh, you know feeling that i i can do everything there's nothing that is impossible in me there's nothing that is impossible because i belong to the creator of the world he is not the gods the small g gods he is the big g god he is the creator of these small g's and i belong to that god and there's so many things if i have to say that god has taken me through you know just to know just to get experience just to have just to be strong to face the world and these are some of the examples of the fear of god when you fear when you fear for god or when you have the fear of god you will definitely not be forsaken you will have something productive in your hand that will always give you a positive end it will never take you to the negative end and then i want to discuss about the fear of the you know the 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 fear that the enemy gives us so the fear that that is brought by the enemy basically decreases our hope and then it limits our victory and does not have a positive end it's just the opposite of the fear of god genesis chapter 3 was 8 to 10 and they heard the sound of the lord god walking in the garden in the cool of the day 
And the man and his wife hid himself from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He heard God calling him, but he didn't come out. You know why? Fear? Why, why was he afraid? Because he disobeyed God. You know, the one thing I personally think is the greatest sin is when you disobey God. When he calls you, when he asks you to do something and you disobey him is the greatest sin according to me. Because there, there, is, there is no other, you cannot, you cannot choose a perfect way when the perfect God gives you something in your life, church. So I, I also would like to you know, share an experience, one of my experiences where I disobeyed God and I saw the consequences was a disaster. So I had a very close friend and uh, she was a very close friend of mine and we grew together. And all of a sudden what happened was her dad got ill and he had a heart attack. So he was recovered, post that he was recovered and he was all in rest at home. But then God was talking about him continually to me. He was asking me to go and pray for the man. So I decided, fine, let me, let me go and visit this man and let me pray for him, let, let me speak something encouraging and let me also share the word of God. So I decided this, but then because of my laziness, because I was tired, because of my you know, comfort zone, I couldn't go. And that day, that evening, God was specifically talking about this person to me and he was asking me, he, I, I felt very strongly in my spirit to go and visit this man and pray for him. But then I couldn't. And the next, the, the same day, and this happened around six, my, I, I thought of leaving home and you know, uh, approaching him by six o'clock, but then by nine o'clock I received a call from the family saying that he was no more. I was in guilt. I was in guilt. And, and this was a kind of fear in me. But this was not the fear that God gave me, for sure. And this was the fear that the enemy gave me. So God has plans in our life. He gives you, he assigns some tasks. But those were the experiences. Those were the experiences which helped me to grow more deeper in the Lord. So disobedience is something that causes disaster. So church, I would encourage everybody to take even, it, it could be very simple, it could be uh, uh, small as mustard, mustard seed, but then when God says it, do it. When God says it, do it. Also, Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 to 26. Then he got into a boat and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him saying, Lord, save us. We are going to drown. He replied, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves and it was completely calm. Jesus was in the same boat where his disciples were in. But when the disciples saw a storm coming up, they forgot that Jesus was with them 
but they started focusing on this term. And these terms are the problems that we encounter in our day-to-day -day life. When you see a problem in your office area, when you see there's a problem in your school, when you see there's a problem around you in your family, you start focusing on the problem and, and you forget the solution. The solution is with you and he's in you and he's for you. Storms may come, but when you call upon the name of the Lord, everything will change, church. There was a storm in my family and that was, that was the turning point for my family to come in the Lord. There was this time when, when we were in deep trouble, when we lost hopes in our life, when we felt hopeless, when the society didn't help us, when the relationship didn't help us. But there was this God who came from heaven to save us. So there was this trouble in the family where my family was, you know, we used to get this life-threatening calls and there was some clash with a family who, ha who were really good and kind of a rowdisms. So that, that, that's when God started, you know, showing his favor upon my family. That's when God started working in my family. So this was a period in 2012 when everything, everything was filled with trouble. Every angle you see, you will see only problems. Everywhere you go, you will see only problems. Every nook and corner of my family was filled with trouble and problem. And then, someday we, 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 we were so hopeless that we just sat and we could only weep because we know we had no, we thought that we had no solution, but there was a solution. So we sat in the hall and we started praising God. In your deepest pains, go to God. Thank Him for giving, for, for making you experience that particular, you know, situation or problem or whatever. So we started praying and we, we were like, it's just a random song, but we meant what we sang. And that's it. There was an outbreak. And that's when we, we saw the angels that we had never seen. We saw the God Almighty who had covered my house with his two huge wings. With a sword he sealed the entrance of my house. That is it, church. We didn't know who God was. We knew who God was, but then we had never tasted him. We knew what he was capable of, but never experienced it. We knew only the problems. We were cribbing about the problems. We were talking about the blessings. We were not talking about what God was capable of doing. So that day, we see this vision where there's a huge, a huge angel he has two huge wings. He is just standing right in front of my house and he sealed my house. That's it. We have no clue where the problems ran. We have no clue what happened to the rowdies. We have no clue where, where the calls that we used, to, we, we used to get, what happened to them. It just disappeared because of this great God. And we serve this great God do not fear. And he's setting the captives free. He's setting up the captives free. What are you bound to, church? What is your fear? What is your fear? Come on, tell me, what is your fear? If your fear is about your future, if your fear is about bringing up your kids, if your fear is about your studies, if your fear is about your career, I'll tell you, the God will seal your fears. He will seal it and he will bring a product from you. 
which will be a blessing to the nation amen so there are three key factors that i want to you know tell you guys which will help you to overcome fear that is faith what is faith please interact with me what is faith so tell me when you say i have faith in god what do you mean trust in him so when you say you trust in him what do you mean by trust it's basically believing him right faith is nothing but believing god and trusting him and the word trusting means that knowing god and knowing that god knows you knowing that god has power to heal you to help you and knowing that god wants to help you god is willing to help you if you think that this is something that i am caught up into and i'm not able to come out believe me if you say you trust god he is able to help you he is willing to help you and he wants to help you he wants to help you today if you if you say that i can't do this if you say that how will i face the society trust in him he is able to do it trusting god was a big challenge for me and i think it's for everybody right so i had this question in my heart god it's so easy to say that i trust you but do i really trust you in my trouble is again a question mark so i went i went into my room some day and i just locked up and i told god everybody in the world says that jesus loves you this is not before getting saved this is after getting saved after knowing who jesus was after knowing what jesus did for me i just went into the room and i asked god god what is love tell me what is love i just i just sat and i asked god everybody says that jesus loves you jesus came for you jesus gave his life for you but how will i experience it only when you ask god you will have an answer church and when you think when you assume things you will never get an answer trust me i asked god god show me your love show me your love teach me how to trust you without knowing a basic concept of love between you and me i can't trust you so i went on my knees and i just stayed there for 2 hours and i was asking god repeatedly show me your love until and unless you show me your love i will not get up from this place and that day he revealed his love i saw his love filled my heart like a cloud and i experienced his love so for a human it is very it's very simple and it's it's quite natural to know that this person loves you but with god it was not easy it was not easy for me to know how much he loved me until i asked a question and he answered me i felt the clouds of love penetrating in my heart and i felt that he was talking to me he was filling me with his love and i started trusting him and i knew that day that this god will never leave me he will never forsake me he will never go away from me and he always holds me not on my left hand right hand where i am able to do a lot of things he holds me and he knows and he knows that i am his child and he knows that you are his child and he always does good for those who trust in him amen, amen? sam's chapter 56 verse 3 but when i am afraid i will put my trust in you can we read it louder when i am afraid i will put my trust in you when you put your trust in the lord you should forget something called logics come on church he doesn't go by logic he goes with your faith we we don't walk by sight but we walk by faith 
ignore logics church ignore logics the doctor might say that you have you know you don't have time on this earth the doctor might give you dates for your life to be ended but your faith has power to bring a person to life to bring a person to life a faith that you have in god can can shake god church that is more than enough for god to do wonders in your life proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 to 6 trust in the lord with all your heart do not depend on your own understanding seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take trust in the lord with all your heart you know what does this mean it, it means that you have okay i'll tell you this there are two types of understanding or knowledge that we have you know i've i've shared this you know quite a lot of time with a lot of people but the knowledge that the world gives is a different knowledge and the knowledge that god gives is a different knowledge for example when say you're walking beside a gutter say you're walking beside a gutter so the first time when you walk you feel bad right or would you feel good <laughs> you would definitely feel bad because it stinks so when you walk for the first time it's kind of you know it's not comfortable but walk the second day beside the same gutter you know what you would have got used to it the third day fourth day fifth day by a week you wouldn't even know that there's a gutter beside you and this is a knowledge that is given by the world to you you might live in the world you might be in a corporate sector you might be working with people who are not who are not good probably but you you know what at the end you get used to the knowledge and you think that is the knowledge but that is not the knowledge and if you want the knowledge from god that's a pure wisdom that will be received only by the word of god and trust the lord with all your heart do not depend on your own understanding so when you depend on your own understanding you become your own god you become own god you are god for you when you when you are god when you start behaving like a god then you will definitely definitely not receive what receive from what god wants you to do seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take and acknowledging god and obeying god is very important church acknowledge god even if things are going bad in your life just acknowledge say god thank you god loves when you say a thank you god is expecting for things even when when things are not going good in our life god is expecting for that small acknowledgement that is a thank you from you there was a there was a situation in my house where my grandpa wasn't well he had he he is a heart patient he had heart attack twice and the third time uh what happened was all of a sudden he was ill and they took him to a doctor and the doctor just you know checked his um what do you say the pulse and he told no please take him to a higher hospital we can't save him and then i i was very sick that day and i was sleeping on my bed and my my mom came up running and she started weeping she told this what happened i just got up from my bed and i told it's okay the doctor is not god and i know who god is if my god can save me from the troubles from my enemies if he can save me from from the life threatening situation what is this he is the owner of you and me 
So I just went into a room and I started thanking God. God, I know for sure that you are going to do something greater in this place. I'm not going to I'm going I'm not going to cry like others do, Lord, because I don't walk by sight. I'm not looking at my grandpa and saying, "No, he's he's not going to be okay." But I just I just said, "No, he will be okay because I walk by faith. If you and me trust in the Lord, let's start walking by faith." So I just went and I just praised God. You know, I just sang this song. You are the air I breathe. And the you know, your air is in my lungs, Lord. If it is you, then he is the one who created us, right? He created, he know how your eyes would be. He knew how your nose, your everything, your your, your internal and your external organs. He knew it. and he definitely knew what was wrong in my grandpa's heart when it is very important for us to seek god when you are in any trouble it could be health it it could be financial trouble the first step is to seek god go to god and he will do crazy miracles to you and then so this happened and i just i just prayed over my grandpa and i told Lord I'm not going to fear anymore because I know you already did a miracle because God says when you have faith you can move mountains if you can move mountain how hard was it for God to do this small miracle it was small for me it was very small for me and then I just told and people people at my home like okay she's gone mad she's gone mad about things so they just left me in a room and i was still worshiping god they left and they had uh, arranged um, 108 that's the ambulance and they just took my grandpa i was still expecting for a miracle to happen and i knew it has already happened and i asked god for three things lord the first the first check up when they do on my grandpa they should tell that the pulse rate are normal this is the first thing i'm that the first prayer that i kept and then the second thing is when the doctor examines his heart he should say that it functions like a youth and the third thing is when the doctor the doctor should have another test which should confirm that he is absolutely fine and all the three things we had three calls and all the three things happened con- consistently like the first call his pulse rate were 80 and above the second call the doctor confirmed he was absolutely fine and his heart was functioning like a youth and the third call they had also taken a test which confirmed that he was all well and this is our god church today i want to encourage you if you feel low if you think you cannot do this if you feel that this is something that is a man couldn't do he is able and that is my god and that is our god and he is jesus he is jesus and he can do all things we can do all things through him we can do all things through through our god who gave his life to us Isaiah chapter 55 was 89 My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts says the Lord and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine for just as the heavens are higher than the earth so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts Amen Your thoughts are not his thoughts your ways are not his ways it is higher and higher and higher my thought was not to stand on the pulpit but his thought was for me to stand here i just thought i would be somewhere in the world just talking to people about god's love but i never knew that he would give me a place to stand and speak amidst of you and that his is thought that is him that is god his ways are not your ways and another thing happens when you trust in the lord church you will be filled with joy 
Yeah? Are you filled with joy right now? Yes, I feel this release in joy in this place. And you have peace when you trust in the Lord. I have peace in my heart because I trust in the Lord. I know for He is with me and He will help me and He knows me. But my friends doesn't have it. My friends doesn't have it. The girl who spoke about her cousin didn't have the peace and the joy that I carried. So it is our responsibility to share wherever you go, church. I, I would like to you know, strongly encourage you in this. It might be hard at times. It might be situations where your friends could mock at you, but take a step of faith, for God honors your faith. He honors your faith. And he would definitely, you, your, your duty is to just to throw a seed in their heart, and he will take over. What is hope, church? What is hope? We saw what was faith, and we, yeah, we discussed about it, knowing God. So what is hope? The biblical definition for hope is confident expectation. It's not just expectation. It is a confident expectation. So I had faith on God. I prayed over my grandpa. But I just didn't leave it. I had a confident expectation that there's something that's going to happen. There's something that changed when I prayed when I had my faith, when I had put my trust, and that is hope. Hope has no fear, no anxiety. If you have hope in the Lord, then you should forget the concept of fear. Don't fear for anything. He is a strong hope. Be confident. Expect confidently from God for whatever you ask. Go, you know, with the authority that he has given you as a son and a daughter. And he will do it for you. And what is love? What is love? God is love. Amen? Can we also read Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11? This is about the hope that God speaks to us for I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope God is working in you to give you a future and a hope thoughts of peace and not of evil so when you have a thought in your mind which doesn't make you feel comfortable then it is from the evil it's time for us to fight against the enemy who acts to be real. He just, he's just acting from his place to be real. But that is not the case. Your weaknesses are your strong strength, church. Your weaknesses, if you feel, no, I, I cannot prophesy. I'm telling you, you can prophesy. If you think, if the enemy says this is something that you can't do, that is the point that you'll have to think about. And that is something that you can do. Because God is a God who is able. Amen? So let's read quickly about love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 4 to, th to 7. Can we read it together? This is love. All right? So love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Can we repeat it once again? 
Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Amen? This is love. When you are patient, when you are kind, when you have no jealousy, when you are not proud, when you are not rude, and when you have no records of being wronged, trust me, you have already defeated fear. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 13 says, And now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. If you think that you can't love, I think it's time for you to think about how we can love and how we can practice being kind, being patient. I think I would encourage you to go back home and read this verse again, church. So these are the three keys that will help us to overcome the fear. The faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. And love is the greatest. Amen? Because this love, don't think you don't have this love. When you receive God in your heart, when you give yourself to God, you've already received love. Because God is love. You have this love in you. And through which you can overcome all your circumstances, all your problems, everything that you think that you're not, that you're not gonna do. I would like to conclude by reading two verses. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fear has not been perfected in love. Amen? If you still have fear in you, remember that it's time for us to get perfected in love. And how would you be perfected in love? Is by the scriptures alone. It is by the word of God. It is time for us to, re to, to repent or to take a step of faith in getting back home and reading and learning and tasting the Lord. For when you have the great mighty God, you are, you are free from your captives. You don't have to fear for a mere human. You don't have to fear for your family. You don't have to fear for nothing. For you have, for you have God in you. And he will help you to have a perfect love. For he is a God who has agape love. Right? He doesn't, he doesn't really want you to, you know, show your love. For he doesn't care because he knows what he is. Even if you say, God, I want to go, I'm far from you, he still says, no, I love you the way you are. So the sin that we make is just like a viral fever. So when you have a fever, when you, when you are down with fever, your mother would never leave you in a room saying, hey, I'm not, I'm not going to come to you because you have fever. No, that's when she's going to take care of you more, right? So this mother is a god. And, this, and, the, and the fever in you is just the sin. He loves you but not the sin. And he is with you. He is more concerned about you when you are down with that fever, that is sin. And he is with you. He will take care of you. The last verse for the day, and I want everyone to receive it in our spirit. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. 
for god had not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind for god has not given you the spirit of fear he has given you the spirit of power the spirit of love and the spirit of sound mind or self control he has already given you is already given you it's time for you to just experience it i had a time where i was i'm i was a girl where i i couldn't you know um take my own decisions i had so much fear in me like what if this goes wrong what if this happens what if that happens and that's the time i started reciting this verse every day when i wake up before even checking my mobile before even checking things i started confessing this this verse on me i just said god you have not given me the spirit of fear but a spirit of power love and self control a sound mind trust me things changed church the day i started confessing the day i started you know receiving it in my spirit the day i believed that god didn't give me the spirit of fear things changed in my life if you are in the same state thinking that especially i see many students here if you think you you're not able to score more than what you expect trust me he's not given you the spirit of fear but he's given you the spirit of love spirit of power spirit of self control you have the power that god has given you and not a man you don't have to copy in your exams but you have the holy spirit who gives you the power to write to to give the best on your papers amen can we read it once again can we just rise up and read it just look at your neighbor and say this for god had not given you the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind for god has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of sound mind and if you still have fear then trust me that is definitely not from god for every word that god has written in bible is is not vain and it is not wrong it is truth it is life when you receive when you recite this word it will come to life 